structure, tension, fluidity, construction, synthesis, reflection, balance. Stanislav Kolobel, former uncertain indicated. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'm very proud to be able to introduce you to this exhibition called Echoes of the Venice Biennale, Stanislav Kolobel. Um, I'm particularly glad we're doing this because we actually opened the show only five days before we had to close down the Trade Fair Palace here at the National Gallery Prague. Um, so this is a great opportunity for us to be able to share the show with you and then hopefully soon you'll be able to come in and see it for yourselves. So Stanislav Kolobal is a very revered artist um, in the Czech Republic. He was born in 1925, so he's seen a lot in his lifetime. He was chosen last year to represent Czech Republic and Slovakia at the Venice Biennale. Um, and the theme of the Venice Biennale last year was May You Live in Interesting Times, which was chosen to respond to this sense of you know, chaos that people were feeling even last year. So obviously it's uh, become even more poignant nowadays, um, or in the last few days. Uh, why this exhibition is, I think, very appropriate now is it does respond to, um, to his experiences, his lived experiences over this 95-year period. And his work is very much about this sense of chaos, but finding structure, finding uh, stability, and uh, finding this sense of beauty and perfection within uh, the imperfect, within the uh, ambiguous and the chaotic and the changing. And this, it reminds us that things are constantly changing uh, and things that happen at some time, they're going to, to change and flow, and his works really respond to that. So I think, uh, I hope you'll find it quite, um, quite moving and uh, quite inspiring at this time. Former Uncertain Indicated is a name of one of Kolobal's artworks from the late 1970s. It's also the name of the exhibition that took place at the Venice Biennale last year. And what we've done uh, for this show, it's both a restaging and it's a reconceptualization of the show that happened last year in Venice in the Czech and Slovak pavilion. Um, we've actually recreated in this small hall of the Trade Fair Palace, we've recreated the exact dimensions of the pavilion space. And the pavilion, it was quite a nice moment of serendipity that the pavilion was first started to be built in 1925. So did the Trade Fair Palace. The ground was broken to build the Trade Fair Palace in 1925. And that was the same year that Kolobal was born. So there's this sense of synergy between these three spaces and uh, so as well as we're restaging the space, we've, uh, we're giving people the opportunity to uh, experience the show as it would have been in Venice, but in a slightly different surrounding. We're also, uh, we've, or Colibel himself has reconceived this show. So we've got additional works that weren't shown in Venice. We've got these wall drawings that appear throughout the uh, small hall and they respond to the space. So Colibel's work is very much inspired by the architecture as I'll explain to you as we go through. So let's go round. Uh, so this is a form of gate. It's sort of a portal into the exhibition. And I suppose it's meant to make you reflect, to think, uh, to um, adjust your mind as you enter the space. And you have this sense of the expanse of the exhibition, the expanse of the entire hall. It's worth pointing out that actually the show originally, when it was shown in, in Venice, was obviously within the same dimensions of the pavilion, but the pavilion has a glass roof. So when we're showing it here, it's opened out into this expanse of the whole, the, the um, entire uh, hall here. And as you can hear with the echoes, perhaps, it's a very kind of open area. Um, and because he's a stage designer, he's, he's really uh, kind of thought about it in this area of how people look at it from these different parts of the, of the building. It's also quite interesting that there is this sense of the echo in this space. It's a much bigger space. It's a more expansive space. And, uh, and this sense of echoes from one city to another, from one situation to another, this constant changing sense. Um, I think if you, once you look at Colobel's work, you'll see his work, there are sort of echoes within individual works. Everything 
that's within the space, the different objects, the different structural forms, they all echo one another, they all have a relationship to one another. So this sense of the echoes really works throughout the works, throughout the space, and, and really combines conceptually everything you see here. Okay, so come through and we'll enter the space. So like I say, you're experiencing, when you walk through, you're experiencing the space as it was in Venice last year. Um, the works have been placed in exactly the same spaces where they were. Um, and the space is exactly the same size, the same dimensions, but obviously it's, it's more opened out, or it's more the sense of being open because we've got rid of the, the glass above and we're open to open out into this entire building. So we start the exhibition with what is appropriately entitled The Beginning of Things. Uh, Colabar chose this work as the first work to include within the exhibition because it really marks a, a turning point in his in his work and his concept of himself as an artist, um, having trained as a stage designer, he started producing uh, sculptures in the 1950s, and these sculptures were figurative sculptures, usually based on the female form. Um, and then he started uh, breaking with that, uh, you know, during the beginning of the 1960s, when uh, when the country was becoming more liberal and there was more opportunity for him to to develop his practice into different areas. So this work, you, I'm sure you can get a sense of it when you look at it. It's actually originally produced on paper in a sort of collage form. You can very much see that with these uh, overlapping areas, but the areas have then become, uh, been recreated in a much more large scale, and it's actually created in wood and especially metal. So it's a very, very heavy piece, actually. We had to make sure this wall was very strong to, to um, withstand it because it looks so light. It looks like paper and it looks like, you know, you could just touch it and it would all fall away, but it's actually this very strong metal work. Um, you're going to see elements of this again and again throughout the rest of these works, these particular shapes, the semicircles, the diagonals and the verticals, how every work, every object uh, within the space works together, enhances each other, how there's this, you know, sense of random order, but it creates an idea of it actually all working together, coming together um, and creating, um, you know, a sense, of, a sense of order amongst this chaos. So this marks a very important work in, in Colibal's career, and then you can really see what, what he's developed here reverberating throughout his career. One of the next pieces he makes, so this is made the next year, is called Label. Um, he chose this title because he was very interested in the work of American artist, American sculptor Alexander Calder, um, and he received a catalogue about Calder in the 19, uh, early 1960s and was very interested in his work. And Calder made these two sets of works in the early 1930s for which he's very well known still. One of them is the mobiles, and they're these uh, sort of metal works that hang from the ceiling. Originally, they were motorized, and then he decided to actually uh, let them have them hanging, and they responded to the air and to movement uh, and to being touched. And then he worked, created these work called stabiles as well, which are set on the ground, and they don't move. And uh, Colabar wanted to respond to this work, but he chose the title label, which is neither mobile nor stable, but is something in between, something constantly changing, something on the edge of movement. Movement, um, this sort of sense of potential energy. And this work, it's, um, it's quite organic in form, these sort of half spheres, all of them lean against one another. And actually, if you took one of them away, because they are balancing, you took one away, all of them would fall apart. And so even though they have these sense of opposites, opposite sides, they're all related to one another. They're all dependent on one another. Also, uh, you know, from your different perspective, as you move around, you get this different sense of the work, different sense of the light and the darkness. You see different forms. And that's something that Colabal has been very interested in throughout his practice, and you see again and again. <laughs> 
This work is fall, and you can see that it's um, you know pad fall, it, this sense of falling. Um, it's again this moment of change, this sense of you know uh, anxiety as you're standing underneath it, like potentially it might fall off. I mean, there's just a tiny, tiny connection between this and the work. Obviously, the actual work and the way it's created, it's very, very structured. The way it's been put together, it's been staying in this in this um, state for many years. Um, so it, it's absolutely fine. But when you're there, you know, you can't really sense how, how it can be that this is safe when it's just this tiny little connection between these two works. But this is the fact that every one of these works is related to one another, is dependent on one another. And I like that sense of community as well. Um, you know, if you took it to, to a, in a different um, realm, it, it has this sense of all of us being dependent on one another. Again, as you see with labor, all these objects, if you take one of them away, all of them would fall. They're all uh, mutually dependent, and therefore there's this sense of community, there's this sense of um, support amongst them. This is another work built in the same year in 1967. This is quite a fun work and the way it's, uh, the actual appearance of it. Um, this is again this idea of uh, the change. It's very much showing this change of form. So whether it's this, the solid object that is melting and becoming something that flows and changes into the floor, or whether it's the other way around and something becoming solidified and becoming whole. And uh, there's this sense of movement, this sense of change, this sense of development, um, this sense of ambiguity and not quite being sure, you know, which direction things are going, constantly changing. Um, I should mention about plaster, that's actually the first uh, material that Colabel started using for his sculptures and he did use some other materials or he has used some other materials throughout his life but he always returns to plaster, he really enjoys plaster. Um, he says he, he likes that it's uh, not pretentious, that it's available to everyone. That was probably actually a, a reason for first using it because he was using it in the 1950s where he wouldn't have had easy access to, to other materials. Um, but he's returned to it because of this lack of pretension and also because it represents this, this change. Um, it begins as, as a powder and then it's formed into this liquid material and then it solidifies. So again, the actual material is this constant sense of movement and change and ambiguity and becoming something new. I think what's so interesting about Colabal is even though from the 1950s he's creating sculptures, I think he brings something very different to art and to sculpture as a graphic artist uh, and as someone that conceives of himself as a graphic artist even though he's maybe more known as a sculptor. Um, he, the way he conceives of his work is very much in this two-dimensional space, developing into three-dimensional space as well. He sees drawing as a, as a spatial um, form of production. He sees space as sort of a graphic form as well. And he really sees this relationship between, between the two. And, uh, and because of that, he creates very different works. He creates works that have this, uh, this sense of precision maybe that you have in in graphic art, in illustration, it's very precise. But is, there's also the sense of uh, the human that's creating this, this taking this uh, random order and actually sort of creating it into something uh, that's very, very precise. And you can see these, these three objects together, these three cylindrical objects that all relate to one another. You can imagine this as a, um, in its 2D form, it's, uh, it's very much, you know, like some sort of architectural or um, some sort of three-dimensional design concept on, on a graphic paper, and then it's actually been created into this three-dimensional form. So it's, again, very conceptual, uh, and it changes our concepts, it changes the boundaries between what is two-dimensional, what is three-dimensional, what is sculpture, what is illustration. <laughs>
And I mentioned that Colobel had produced that last work, Drift, when he was based in the south of France just before the Prague Spring, or just after the Prague Spring, but just before the Soviet invasion. This is another work he produced at that time, and it's called At Any Given Moment, um, or At A Given Moment, which is, uh, you know, again, his works, are, his titles are so descriptive, and they're so, um, they, they give us a different insight into the work. It really helps you to see the work, thinking about his titles. He spends a lot of time actually kind of coming up with, with, uh, with nice, interesting short titles that really makes us think differently. And again, he's taken this very sort of art historical object of the frame, uh, something we're very much used to seeing within art history, and he's made it for, well, within art, and he's made it very, very precise here. Um, there's this beautiful, uh, sense of symmetry and then it's disrupted with this wave-like figure and it's called at a given time it just sort of shows that everything can change at any moment uh, you have this sense of of structure have this sense of reliance thinking things won't change and suddenly you have this sort of organic flowing object that uh, interrupts the space as well it sort of comes from nowhere and then it pushes out the edge of the frame it's a really beautiful object it's really thought-provoking and uh, and it's also really poignant when you think about the fact that he produced this in the summer of 1968 and it was actually when he was traveling back from France he stopped off in Croatia and it was there that um, it was there that the Soviet invasion happened in Prague, and he decided that he would come back to Prague, that he'd come back to Czechoslovakia, and that he'd enter the occupied country. A lot of other artists and people made a different decision if they were abroad, and they decided to uh, stay out of the country and then weren't allowed to enter for many years, but he decided to come back, be with his family and friends, and to be part of the sort of resistance to the movement. And this work, what used to be an edge, is the last work in the show here that is made before um, the uh, Soviet occupation begins in 1968. So it's the last work um, in which uh, Kolobal is creating these sort of formulist um, uh, plaster works in which he's really considering about the form and the structures. I mean, that's something that he has throughout his show, but this is a very... Um, immediate example of it. And this work is really interesting because, like I've said, Colabal really much prefers working in plaster that, um, for his sculptures, and that's what he returns to. This is a rare example of a bronze work he has. I see this work as being quite a playful comment on the history of modernism in art. It really reminds me of a Brancusi work, which is uh, obviously very... Um, very uh, polished bronze, very uh, expressive in, in, in the actual kind of representation of the material. But unlike a modernist sculpture, which are very structured, very precise, here, because it's called what used to be an edge, you can see this erosion, this sense of decay, this, again, this sort of undulating, wave-like, organic form that destroys our sense of what we think the work would should be, which destroys the sense of precision, the sense of control that you have in, in the cube form. Um, I think this is a really beautiful work, really expressive, and, uh, and it marks a really um, poignant end to this period in Kolobel's life and in his practice before the Soviet occupation in August 1968. And then the next work, chronologically, that we have in the exhibition is a work that really responds to what's happened over the next few years. Um, this is in 1973, this work is made. Obviously, it looks quite different from the works that come before. It's made out of wood. It's got this um, thread that's been connected between two pieces of wood. And this is a really biographical work as well. So this work is actually created out of the wooden crate that carried some of Kolobal's works to Japan, which were on display in Tokyo in 1970. And then the crate had come back, and into the, in the intervening period, there had been the Soviet occupation had begun, and uh, Kolobal had been prevented from showing his work abroad and from traveling abroad. Um, 
And so he was feeling very dejected. He was starting to uh, spend more time within his studio um, to become more isolated from society. And uh, when he received this crate, this crate that had been able to travel whilst he was uh, confined with inside, he chose to make this sculpture out of it. And you can see it looks, when you first look at it, like it's very, it's very precise, it's very vertical, but actually there's a very, very fine downward slope of this sculpture, and it suggests this something slightly off, something isn't slightly as it should be, this sense, slight sense of dejection. Also, the thread that's connected between the two, there's the obvious sense of tension. Uh, maybe it will snap at any moment. There's this sense of anxiety that's reflected in that. And it's also um, because he thinks of himself as an illustrator and as a graphic artist, it is when you first see it, it looks like a drawn line, but then you get closer and you see there's all these organic material elements to it and the thread, it's really beautiful and really um, poignant because it's like the drawing has come to life, has become embodied. And then it's very important in these works, these series of works he has, that the thread, you actually see how it's just left at the end and it's just falling loosely. So this whole sense of control, this sense of structure that's so important within his work, it's lost at that moment and, uh, and he gives in to the work actually being able to um, take its own form um, and the materials sort of having this sense of their own, their own being, their own uh, relationship to the world, which the artist isn't able to control. He, um, Colibal decided to include a quote next to this work, and it's a quote from a uh, poet, Yuji Orten. His history, his personal history, and his words carry a lot of weight. And as it says, say I lay, lay like all things that carry no weight. And this is how Colibel felt at this time as an artist that was unable to control his own, his own relationship with the world, how he was unable to control how he wanted to show his works. And he felt that suddenly he was not in control. He had no weight. He lacked any sense of importance. Um, this is a really important work as well in terms of works that come afterwards, this idea of the thread and the thread taking the shape or taking the form of the drawn line. Um, you see it in, in these works as well. Um, again, this work particularly, this is slightly work, later work from the 1980s, but um, you have these drawn lines, you have the threads, you have the sculpture, it's all in together. It's very complex work um, and it's also uh, changes as you walk around it, as you see it. It's all about this idea of perspective and, uh, and it's very theatrical as well. It really goes back to his sense of stage design. You have the different parts sort of leading back into the work. So then we <laughs> go across the room again to just near the start. Um, this is actually the work that the, this space, this show that was shown at the Venice Biennale, Former Uncertain Indicated, this is the work that it was named after. So Former Uncertain Indicated from 1976. And it's developed from these thread works that you see that were created in the early 1970s. But Colibel actually incorporates them into the canvas, again with drawn lines as well. He's also cutting into the canvas here. He was very interested in the work of uh, Lucio Fontana, who's an Italian artist who cut into the canvases. Um, and that, that you can see the influence of his work on that as well. This is a really fascinating work. And also the name, once again, the name is very thoughtful. It makes us see the work in a new light. A former, uncertain, indicated, and it has these sort of three shapes. You have this uh, extra section that's been cut out and then replaced in the work. You have the threads that are forming the sense of perspective. And then you have these drawn lines and you're not quite sure which is former, which is uncertain, which is indicated, but it's this sense of the past the present and the soon to be. Uh, so there's this sense of time as well, this sense of constant change throughout time is really strongly represented in this work. And as I said before about this sense of him 
um, graph the relationship in his work between the spatial and the graphic, you really see that very, very strongly in this work. And then this is a little bit later, but uh, this is a very important work. I think this, uh, this, these thread works are a medium part in, in Colabelle's career. They're a sense of series, you know, something that holds all those works together. And again, like the beginning of things, this, this series of works called the Berlin Drawings marks a really significant break in Colabelle's career. And really everything that's come after, that he's produced after in the la last 30 years has been developing out of this series. So it's called the Berlin Drawings. He made them when he was based in Berlin uh, on a fellowship. And he was based there in 1988 for about a year. So it was in the final year of the communist regime in Czechoslovakia, who, although he didn't know at the time. And what he started doing was he actually produced these works these drawings within the first few weeks of being based in Berlin. What he did is half the, um, half the sheet and then chose a starting point. So everything is within two halves and has this sort of defining line down the middle of it. And then he would choose a starting point and start to create either a semicircle or a line and everything related to one another. But again, there's this sense of uh, controlled chaos, controlled structure. It very, much depends on how the artist wants to develop the work, but all of these forms have a relationship to one another. So when he'd created this series of drawings, about 30 of them in total, then he started to think of them as, oh, actually they look like ground plans or floor plans. They look like architectural indication of architectural spaces. And so he started to create these into models. First, he made cardboard models, um, and then he made them into small metal models based exactly on the size of these works. And then he started to develop them into much, much bigger works, and this series is known as the constructions. And thankfully, that's something that we've been able to include in this exhibition that we weren't able to include in Venice because of the restrictions in the space. But because now we can we're uh, placed within the wider small hall. We've actually included some extra works at the end of the exhibition when you, ex when you exit from the, what is the sort of pavilion space that we've recreated here. So I'll take you through there now. So we've now exited the pavilion. We've exited the space that was the Venice Biennale show. And we've now, as I guess, we've entered the echoes. We've entered the new part that uh, was reconceived and uh, added on uh, when we thought about this show again in this new space. So as I was saying about the Berlin drawings, after Colabel had created them, he started to think of them as architectural models as um, representations of space. So the first thing he started to do was to create small models which were actually you know, pretty much scale one-to-one -one based on the actual drawings themselves. He created uh, these uh, individual elements and placed them together. They're very constructivist in form. And he was originally creating them in, in uh, cardboard, and then he creates them in metal. So we've got four of the works in metal that are created at this time in the early 1990s. So he creates these small-scale objects, and then he develops them into these large objects. And we're very, very lucky to be able to include these works. These two works are known as constructions, and they're one of the most significant um, Parts of Colabelle's practice, he's creating these works in the 1990s. Uh, we've got one of the works in wood, which is how they were originally created. This work is, comes from the uh, collection of the National Gallery Prague, so we're delighted to be able to bring it out of storage and show it on display here. Um, and again, it's, it's very architectural in form. It's, you feel like you can almost enter this space, but you can't. <laughs> um, and when Colabelle was thinking about it and looking at the drawings, he was thinking about the actual space um, the height of the object, so he develops these 3D, um, these 3D constructions out of the drawings, and he reconceived them again, thinking about the height as you move around, 
And it's also very, very, again, like I've said before, very theatrical, very much linked back to his experience as a stage designer in the 1940s and 1950s. And that's something that over um, his entire practice, it continues to, to be uh, a part of how he conceives of his work. He's, uh, all his works relate to each other. They all have this same impetus throughout them, this sense of also control again and randomness that's found structure and form. So Colabal, when he's finishing off these works, he's already in his mid-70s by that point. Um, so he decided that um, at that point, maybe he needed to work on slightly smaller works, works that uh, weren't quite so uh, physically demanding. And so in the last few years, he's been creating uh, some of these uh, relief works and also some watercolor works. That's something that he hadn't um, created before, watercolor, but he's got this beautiful series of watercolors only from last year that were created. Um, and again, you can see these over overlapping forms. You can see how it relates back to the the work, the beginning of things from the 1960s. And again, he's taking a, a different medium that he hadn't worked with before, watercolor, and he's um, reconceiving of these same ideas um, within this new medium. It's very beautiful. And then he's taken these objects, and again, they've inspired, uh, they've inspired additional works. So there's constantly a relationship between these different practices, between uh, watercolour and drawing and between sculptural forms. And I think this is a really nice thing with which to finish our tour, actually, um, because for me this epitomises Colabal's work as an artist. Um, as we've discussed, this started off with the Berlin drawings, these, uh, these particular forms, these particular geometric abstract conceptions. And then he's developed it into a sculptural form. And then by placing it in the architectural space, and even though it is inspired by the architecture, it still takes on a new sense of the architecture when it actually comes within the space. Some people might see it as quite a difficult part of the building, these grated vents. Um, you know, maybe people wouldn't think of it as a particularly beautiful part of the building. It's a very functional part, but actually it's uh, given more significance by being shown here with the work. And this really epitomizes what Colabal has done with this whole show, is really conceived of what he did in Venice and thought about it again in the new setting of the Trade Fair Palace in Prague, and he's created something new and something that I hope you'll have the opportunity to see um, when we're all able to enter this building once again. Thank you.